you guys enjoyed my breakdown so much by myself i've decided in the month of september barring something crazy happening in one piece which is entirely possible i'll do the breakdowns by myself we'll resume by inviting guests maybe a couple times a month next month lord willing other than that it's just gonna be me so strap in i think the good thing about this when it's just me it's intimate it feels like it's just me and you guys and we're geeking out so yeah if you enjoyed content like this make sure to subscribe to the channel that helps me out a lot let me know you enjoy it i definitely make more and so let's get right into it shall we Chapter 1059, The Captain Kobe Incident. We'll start with a cover page. Katakuri versus Oven. It's not much to really say here, but I'll say this. This could have been handled in Whole Cake Island the same way with Caesar's gas. The hallucinogenic gas. I, I think it's very perfect. I think it's apt that Caesar can do this. It makes sense. We thought that Su Caesar's devil fruit was one of the more underrated ones in the story. Just because Caesar didn't know how to use it, he's not a combatant, right? He's a scientist. So seeing it used this way, Katakuri stand here, but I, I get it. I understand. Don't want to spend too much time here. It's just Katakuri punching Oven. Not sure where it's gonna go from here. Just quick tidbit, Oda did say Oven is the most durable Big Mom pirate. So they're both fine. It's just they're hallucinating right now. Even though Katakuri should have future sight, so he should be able to avoid Oven's punches. Maybe he's flustered because he's hallucinating, or he knows, or he may he might think that he is. So maybe that's why future sight isn't working. Like I've said before, guys, observation hockey is one of the more inconsistent things in the story. <laughs> Like, it just works when it works. That's it. Okay, so now on to the chapter. We're near Sphinx. Marco called an Uber. An Uber called Shanks, right? Shanks and his crew, they picked up Marco and dropped him off somewhat because he, he just flew away. But this is basically Oda, a call back to when Shanks asked Marco to join his crew. It felt weird Marco saying that he's too old and worn out because he is older than Shanks, but he's just 45 years old. It just shows the relationship. I mentioned this before that Shanks took care of Whitebeard's and Ace's burial. So Marco owes Shanks. But either way, he doesn't want to fight anymore. It feels a bit ominous, not going to lie to you guys, but seeing the Shanks crew in this light again, it feels good. Like, I remember we didn't see Shanks for years on top of years. Now, it feels like in the past couple months, we've seen Shanks so many different times. And I really can't wait for Film Red to come out so I can see Shanks even more. But the playful nature of Shanks always comes out. But I think that's what makes him so scary. Where he says, it's not like I'm a handful or anything, but like we saw what he was able or willing to do to Green Bull. It felt very nostalgic, made me think about Marine Ford, maybe made me sad a little bit. But moving on from that, we got a flashback about Marco meeting Luffy earlier in Wano. With this, it tied up a lot of things for me. This chapter tied up some things especially for wano and it took some of the sour taste out of my mouth because wano overall i've said it before it's a pretty good arc it just had some lackluster endings some unsatisfying endings and what oda did here basically shut me up in regards to the yamato thing and the marco thing because that was the thing that was trending on twitter for the most part hey marco did not meet with luffy the entirety of wano what happened was i speculated that luffy could go to sphinx because of that now i think it's certain that he's not going to sphinx like why would he say goodbye to marco to, to just meet him again and in Sphinx. So no way he's going to Sphinx. More than likely, he just goes to Elbaf, right? Something happens and throws him off their path. They go to Elbaf. And I think Full of Lead is out of the question right now. I'll explain to you guys a bit later why I don't think he goes to Blackbeard's Island just yet. But I guess first the Yamato thing, where Yamato is smarter than I thought. The Odin thing was just bullshit and a way to trick Momonosuke and to preserve his pride a little bit because she realized that Greenbow was not driven off by them. It was the hockey burst and that's why he left. And so for her, she's staying back to provide some i guess more firepower if anybody was to come and pull up to the country i was saying that if an admiral or a couple of admirals show up then they wouldn't be able to handle them and i still i still believe that but what are the odds right but i think having yamato there does make things a lot safer because she's probably the strongest in wano right now i'm still not okay with it i, I still think yamato should have went with the crew even though it's better for her not to go it's something i wanted oda did trick us by having Yamato say she want to go to crew the entire time, the entirety of Wano, I want to leave, want to leave. Then she stays. She's going to come back. She's going to be there again. Luffy saying that Yamato being there would take some of the worry off his mind. Just shows the confidence he has in her and her strength. So that's really cool because remember Luffy when he was fighting Kaido, Yamato had to hold off Kaido for a little while while Luffy was resting. So Luffy's well aware of Yamato's strength. Yamato being there makes him feel a bit safer. She's going to join. She's going to leave them. She's going to join the crew. It's just inevitable. It's just going to take some time because Oda has plans. He has something in motion. And again, 
again, I, I critique One Piece at times and sometimes it's baseless, sometimes it's apt, but sometimes I just gotta walk things back. This is what I'm walking back, right? The Yamato thing, yeah, it didn't feel good at the time. The explanation about Odin traveling or touring Wano, like what are you gonna see? Your father's factories? Like nothing is really there. This explanation makes a shit ton of sense and I love it. Marco and Luffy, I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for a conversation between Marco and Luffy ever since Marineford, or rather the payback war because it's so much there. They didn't cover everything I wanted them to cover, but Marco, saying hey your brother be really proud but luffy saying you saved me back in the summit war i never got to say thanks marine force about a decade ago i think 2011 it was a long time ago <laughs> and so we're finally seeing a conversation about something that occurred about say occurred no it occurred over two years ago in the story over a decade ago outside of the story but marco's done like i said something you mentioned to jimbe saying that back then they were so ready to spring into action marco said makes you wonder why i guess is just because of the casualties or just the influence and how much he was willing to fight for his dad, Whitebeard. What I was looking at was Jinbei's eyes. And for a while, I forgot that Jinbei and Marco, they had somewhat of a relationship because Jinbei, he was working with Whitebeard. Like I said, that's why I call Jinbei Kevin Durant, just because he's been with Big Mom, Whitebeard, and now Luffy. So Jinbei knows the winning teams, man. He knows how to stick on a winning team. And he was a warlord at one point. So that's his whole purpose, though. So it's a joke because he's trying to preserve the fishmen. And, you know, he's going to work with anyone who's in the business of preserving the fishmen and his people. So. Come on, man. We love Jinbei, but I think the KD comparison is apt. Again, Marco's flying off after saying that Luke Ace would be very proud of Luffy, very ominous. This could tie into the Weevil storyline because what Oda is doing, he's bringing storylines together like he did with Blackbeard and Hancock. And he could do that here with Blackbeard, Hancock, Marco, and Weevil in some way. On the map, when you look at it, Sphinx, Full of Lead, and Elbath, they're not that far apart, right? They're somewhat in the same vicinity. So I don't know, Blackbeard could pull up to Sphinx at some point. Not sure why he wouldn't take Marco's Devil Fruit. I'm so interested in what happened in the Payback War because it was an overwhelming defeat but blackbeard did not take his devil fruit why not that would be perfect for blackbeard and his body and his other damages he takes from the yami yami no mi i don't know not i don't know we will definitely get an explanation for why blackbeard did not take marco's fruit or what happened at the payback war oda is just building it and for me i would like for it to be revealed right now but we tried to exercise patience over here so now we transition right this was the, the time in the chapter where i'm losing my mind because we're finally going to get what happened between kobe and boy hancock the isle of woman amazon lily Calm belt. So, Boy Hancock's suggestion is not terrible to marry a Yonko because then it's natural protection. Luffy being her husband would definitely deter people from going there and it may influence some people to go there, but for the most part, it will deter most people. So, even though Boy Hancock loving Luffy the way she does leads to this, I think it's a perfect solution for her and protecting our family but this this will never happen we get a flashback as to what happened on amazon lily a few weeks earlier and what we see is not something i expected so when we saw margaret and they were talking about the child and they're saying they recognized the kid instantly i was like okay this is boy hancock it has to be but what i did not expect is for blackbeard to pull up here we've been trying to speculate where is blackbeard going what is blackbeard doing for yonko saga we did not know what blackbeard's true intentions were because he said he wanted to do something because the world government they weren't going to do anything with it apparently the it is boy Hancock and her devil fruit. Blackbeard's choices, it's hard to follow them because we don't know exactly what he's thinking at all times. But acquiring Boa's fruit, the main reason is that it's very freaking powerful. It has the ability to entice, it has the ability to manipulate, but I think it works differently for different people. But it's so perfect for Boa Hancock because she is stunning. So then through her beauty, she can basically turn men to stone like Medusa. But what I absolutely loved about this chapter is because Katarina Devon is right here. We can't use Katarina Devon as a reason why. Why someone else is showing up or Oda playing around or doing something because it's Katarina Devon. And the thing is, Katarina Devon did not have to show up as Katarina Devon. She could have shown up as something else, somebody else. They could have kidnapped one of the random girls from Amazon Lily and she could turn into her. But she chose to show up and Oda is showing us Blackbeard and their crew. I mean, they're cannibalistic. I mean, this crew is dangerous. Katarina Devon is saying that she wants to wring Bo Hancock's neck. She's gorgeous. And Blackbeard is saying to Vasco Shot that he can have his way with Boy Hancock after they take her powers. But here's the thing. Vasco Shot is saying, wait, wait, wait. Don't you think we'd have more fun if we took her alive? So at first, I know some people are interpreting this as they could take her powers while she's alive or and she could remain alive. No, Blackbeard clearly states you can do whatever with her after you take her powers. But Vasco Shot wants to have more fun with her alive, which implies if they do take her powers, she dies. There's still things I guess Vasco Shot could do if she was dead, but 
that would be a completely different realm of things that I, I don't want to get into right now. The Navy, the Navy, the Navy, the Navy. I have so many <laughs> things to say about the Navy, but they're just following along with status quo. They're not engaging without approval, which makes sense because the goal was to go after Boy Hancock and engage with Boy Hancock, not Marshall D. Teach Blackbeard. But Blackbeard don't care. Blackbeard is attacking them and saying, yo, I'm here for Boy Hancock. Get out. Kobe is here. Kobe's still trying to figure out what's going on, but he states that it's expected that other pirates would want a piece of the former warlords. I don't think they expected Blackbeard. Now, Kobe's saying some things that, come on, bro, what are you talking about? Saying, yo, just surrender to us. We'll leave immediately. We're not looking for a fight. And for Hancock, she was in captivity before she was a slave. There is no way she's going with the Navy. And for Kobe, he really can't guarantee her safety because he's just a captain at the end of the day. Even though Oda was showing him in a positive light, I think, in this chapter, you don't have the pull to guarantee anything. The one thing for sure, he is famous they're calling him the hero like santa sonia is calling him the hero they're calling him conceited which for kobe we're not really sure how strong he is at this point the last time he saw his strength was basically the torpedo at the reverie <laughs> We need a bit more, but clearly he can hang with Vice Admirals, but I'm not sure if that's even a feat at this point, considering what we've seen from Vice Admirals. Boy Hancock, legitimately one of my favorite characters because she is a very powerful woman, very prideful woman, but she can back up the things she says. And of course her saying, I will never ever willingly go into captivity. It just shows her resolve and she doesn't forget about what happened to her in the past. Something as well in the chapter, Blackbeard knows about Lunarians. Makes sense because he, I believe he's an archaeologist and he's an historian obviously knowing about devil fruits blackbird says wait you're kidding white hair brown skin and black wings so he knows something he knows something about lunarians he's heard about them before and blackbeard is very well traveled so i would not be surprised if whitebeard is the person who told him about this because remember whitebeard told marco about the god sitting above the red line and blackbeard was on whitebeard's crew for a long time him hearing this from whitebeard is not that crazy or just through other means either way he knows something from what we're seeing here on this page with this kid who looks like he has a smaller version of Yoru and attacks Blackbeard. PX something cuts a mountain down that's in Amazon Lily. He's a pacifista, serve him, but Blackbeard is forced to use hockey. This is a Yonko of the Seas, ladies and gentlemen, and all props to Vegapunk. Vegapunk one-ups everyone. That flashback for Kaido was not for no reason. We saw basically King looking just like this as a young kid being experimented on and Kaido's DNA being taken all in Punk Hazard and it's come back full circle because in Punk Hazard, Caesar tried to recreate Zoan fruits. He ended up with failures. Vegapunk recreated Kaido's fruit a one-to-one. -one. There are no flaws. We have Queen. He shows his developments and how he incorporated his devil fruit with different technology and it's pretty cool. Vegapunk has created pacifistas that are very strong. Remember, Luffy and his entire crew could barely take down one pacifista pre-time skip. And yeah, you'd be like, let's pre-time skip. Luffy and his crew were very strong considering pre-time skip. Of course, they can't compete with what they are now, but back then, Luffy was a prominent crew. He was a supernova and Vegapunk created pacifistas who could take them out. Just one. He had several hundreds, maybe thousands. Now, judge he talked about cloning and i want to talk about that really quickly because i went back and reread just the entirety about the lineage factors and it's so interesting man so yanji says this yanji says human beings can be built and he reminds us bloodline elements lineage factors that was vegapunk's discovery and what bloodline elements are it is the essence of life itself it is a blueprint of life and yanji calls it a step into the realm of godhood so i think vegapunk for a long time now has stepped into the realm of godhood but here's more when vegapunk found this out this is when he got arrested and the research team was this band the research team being mads with mads it was caesar judge vegapunk and queen so then judge continuing experimenting and judge was able to create clones and for the clones none of them have a clue about what they're doing they're clone soldiers and here's the thing it takes five years for judge to create a 20 year old soldier five years so if vegapunk one up caesar just blew him out the water one up to queen blew him out the water how can he one up judge well you one up him by not only creating clones but also splicing lunarian dna but implementing or implanting special eyes on these kids i'm sure vegapunk has a way for them to grow up rather quickly where this could be a thing where they're still experimenting and oda is showing them to us in their early stages when we see them five days five months from now they will be fully grown 20 years old 
that would not be surprising considering Oda has shown us Mihawk at around that age. And of course, Oda has shown us all of the Shichibukai as kids, save Buggy. Actually, we do see Buggy as a kid as well. Vegapunk has stepped into Realm of Godhood because he understands bloodline elements and how to manipulate them. But splicing with Lunarian DNA and creating these small young monsters, it is insane. They were right. Fujitora was 100% correct. They are confident in their creations because they created the warlords, but they're better because because they listen for the most part because Kobe seemed like he had to call out a few times for it to listen but it eventually did which again begs the question will one go rogue and I, I'll have a full video on the SSG coming at some point in the week but this is very very impressive moving on a bit Boa uses slave arrow right and I think the most interesting thing here is not the fact that El Meppo and Yamakiji turned into stone because that's kind of expected Kobe didn't I don't know people calling Kobe gay on the timeline or asexual I don't know maybe the arrow just didn't hit him or maybe he is one of those this is also showing that Kobe is kind of on a different level not only strength wise but also plot wise he's very important to the story I can't think of a better reveal of Boa's and Blackbeard's updated bounty than to have Blackbeard having Boa by her throat saying I can see they don't call you Empress for nothing just basically confirming her beauty Boa Hancock effectively eradicated his other commanders Katarina Devon and Vasco shot I'm sure that felt good he definitely didn't hear the Vasco shot comment but <laughs> Uh, sweet comeuppance. I'm not gonna lie, seeing Kobe there with Blackbeard and Boy Hancock, it was somewhat surreal. Cause I'm like, yo, Kobe, you're in front of the Pirate Empress and a Yanko of the Sea, bro. You're in it right now. What are you gonna do, hero? And it seemed like it was over for Boa, but Boa quickly turned the ties because she told Blackbeard how her fruit works and that if you want your friends to live, you will need my power. Something Blackbeard says as well is interesting. Like I said, some of the thematic elements Oda has introduced, he continues, and that's Blackbeard and Luffy. Because it's not a coincidence that Luffy's picture is right there. You have Blackbeard, you have Boa, and Blackbeard says, hey, there's no man that would be able to resist your beauty. Luffy would. Also, Blackbeard says, if I unhand you, do you think she'd play nice and change everyone back to normal? He said, nah, head scratcher, but I guess I gotta kill you. So Blackbeard was willing to sacrifice his crew members, which if this was Luffy, he never would do some shit like that. And then the god appears, Dark King Rayleigh. Meal. Every time Rayleigh's on screen, it's, it's a joy because this is somebody that he's a remnant of the past. He is Roger's right hand, and he's been so important and intricate to the story. I'm just never really aware of when he's gonna make a move but this one should have been obvious he saved boy hancock and then see now hancock just leaning on his knee at the end of the chapter just shows their relationship he's really a father figure to boy hancock either way he de-escalated the situation masterfully but that's the wisdom that comes with all of his travels and he's still a very formidable opponent and blackbeard realizes it's something i've mentioned before blackbeard did see rayleigh prime ray in action when the whitebeard pirates fought the roger pirates for three days rayleigh saved hancock she was going to die now also information we find out was Shaki is the ex-captain of the Kuja Pirates, right? A former Empress of Amazon Lily, something we theorized years ago. But Oda has been telling us slowly but surely that Shaki was a pirate empress. A full video will be coming out on this, but the first thing, the main thing I want to just say is that, and again, this was theorized years ago. All the women in Amazon Lily, their names are based on flowers, like even the island. Shaki's real name is Shakiyaku, and this flower is in East Asia, it's the national flower of China, and it symbolizes royalty. So so it's not surprising that Shakuyaku, when we knew her name for a long time, is a former empress of Amazon Lily. There's a lot more to it, but we'll reveal that in the video once it comes. But this was amazing to finally get confirmation. The chapter ends with Kobe and Blackbird has taken Kobe for whatever reason. It makes me wonder how everything went down. Did really give Kobe to Blackbeard? Did Blackbeard demand something for him to leave? I'm not sure because Kobe is very important to the story, I believe. But also Kobe's a member of Sword and who's also on Blackbeard's crew right now who could be a member of Sword, Aokiji. I wonder if Blackbeard could try Aokiji's hand and basically test him saying, hey, kill this kid. This is how I know you're legit and you're one of us. Not sure. Or he could just sell him to Cross Guild or he's trying to make him the 10th Titanic captain. I don't know where this is going to go. Either way, Luffy might be seeing Kobe really soon. Sooner than we expected because he's with Blackbeard. Ah. Uh... And it's, it's kind of scary. I'm not going to lie to you guys. But quickly, I want to read some of my members' comments. The membership would not be for this channel. It's for my other channel. The link is in the description if you would like to join. But here's what some of my members are saying. Soma, he says, I think the devil fruit works on emotion. Boa said that the next user can't undo her stones since they were made from her beauty. I would think that the fruit would work differently for Blackbeard. Example, the fruit activates if someone hates him or if someone is scared of him. Then the name of the fruit would actually be revealed. P.S. The beam only has a heart shape since she does a shape with her hands. And the arrows are only hearts since she kisses them. 
Then the fruit could have other visuals for people that use other emotions. Shout out to Soma. Thank you again for becoming a member. I like this because this is somewhat what I feel about Sugar's Devil Fruit, that depending on the user, it may be different. Mugsby, another member of mine, says other thing. People are like Blackbeard said no one else is going for it, so we should take it. I'm not so sure he's talking about Boa's powers because only the three members showed up. It makes me feel like this was just a side quest on the way to actually doing something different. Could be wrong though. I like this a lot because what he's saying is that Blackbeard did something before and the bounty could have reflected that. Maybe Blackbeard did something as well beforehand and this is just a side quest. I really like that perspective, Mugsby. Last one for my guy, Sudaname, my guy Jafar. Thank you so much, my brother. He says, Eric is 100% right. The bounties are getting ridiculously high. It's worthless now. Luffy had to invade any lobby and cause the destruction of the entire island just to get 300 mil. Blackbeard had to win two wars and conquer tons of territories to get 2.2 bill. It's honestly funny we went from Ace having 550, Sabo as the second in command of the Revolutionary Army having 602 mil or something. There's no reason for Crocodile to have two bill. So, this is an area of contention because a lot of people feel like bounties are becoming just so astronomical that Oda is just trying to scale. They're not wrong, he is. Um, and this is just evident in any story. As we go further, some people in some numbers, some characters, some strength feats may lose relevance because we're later in the story. Not sure if Oda had these bounties planned in advance when he gave Ace 550 or Sabo 602, but they do pale in comparison now. But I, I guarantee you Sabo's bounty is definitely over a bill at this point. Maybe two, three, four bill because he is the flame emperor. But I love this observation. This makes me want to talk about bounties and how they've been scaling for sure because it's a very interesting topic. But guys, leave your thoughts below i'm enjoying these solo breakdowns for my members thank you so much if you would like to become a member again link in the description comments will be read i'll have a solely member focused comment video that will be happening so if you're a member comment and let me know what you think because i'm going to read your comments and then also for some people who are not members right even if you're not a member just by being here you're showing me a lot of support and i sincerely appreciate that but guys give me your thoughts how do you feel about this how do you feel about everything in the chapter one more thing i wanted to talk about before we go and again this will be covered in in a separate video about the SSG and Seraphim. <sighs> Weevil. Weevil is very interesting in, in this because he looks like an experiment. Kizaru specifically mentioned Weevil having the power of a young white beard. Was this the angle Vegapunk was going after this entire time? Will they be able to revive white beard in the form of a specific young kid with a powerful fruit? It's getting scary, boys and girls. But give me your thoughts. Make sure to like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter at BragoDAce. Follow me on Instagram at BragoDAce. Thank you to my patrons. I appreciate you guys all so much. Thank you to my members. I appreciate you guys all so much. Again, guys, be sure to like and subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one peace Start doubting me, I felt lost. I